What's up C3 youth, Hannah here. I hope you are all excited for tonight because we have an incredible night planned for you. That said, make sure you drop a shout out to the chat feature to the right side of your screen and say hello. Tonight is going to be awesome, but before we jump in, here are a few quick announcements for you guys. We are so pumped that summer is almost here and camp is right around the corner. But due to the coronavirus, camp has been moved to July 20th to the 25th, and there is still time to register. So if you have not already signed up, make sure you get on OIM's website or have your parents click the link in the parent email. This will be a week you will never forget. Also, we are so excited to announce that we will be having a special senior drive through on Sunday, May 31st from 2 to 5 p.m. to celebrate the class of 2020. We hope that all seniors will be a part of this and we would love for all other students to help serve. More information on this will be coming out this week. Now it's time to jump into week two of our mayhem competition. But before we turn it over to Pastor Anthony, here is the standings after week one. All right, in last place, we have the senior high boys. In third are the junior high boys. And in second place are the senior high girls. That means in first place, we have the junior high girls. Well, right now, the girls are dominating the competition, but it's closer than you think, and you still have plenty of time to get your team into first place and win that Chipotle party. Well, without further ado, let's turn it over to Pastor Anthony for week two of our Mayhem competition. Well, hey students, I am so glad to see you live here again on Wednesday. And man, I'm so excited to continue this competition of mayhem week two tonight with you all. Hannah went over the standings. Girls, you're dominating right now. Guys, you still have a chance. Don't worry, don't be too defeated. You can earn and jump from first to fourth. That's how close it is. And let me tell you right now, you're gonna want that Chipotle party because you're gonna be able to order whatever you want. So, hey, here we go. We're going to dive into it right away. Give you a little background of what we're going to be doing tonight is we are going to be playing a trivia game based on movies. And so I'm going to uh, ask a question and I'm going to give you three answers and it, you are going to have to choose the right answer. So here's what I need you to do right now. If, if, if I'm full screen on your TV or on your computer, you need to go back to the, the small screen because to, to answer these questions, you're going to have to answer in the chat. And, and what you're going to do is, is when you put in your answer. So let's say, for example, the answer is Captain America. This week, you're gonna put in the answer, Captain America, and put in your team. So, for example, if, if I'm answering this and I'm a senior boy, I'm gonna put Captain America, 12th grade boy, or Captain America, 6th grade girl, and, and that's how you're gonna answer because some of y'all, you have some crazy chat YouTube names, and I just don't know if what grade and if you're a guy or a girl. So make sure you put that in so we know what team to give points to if you're correct. So you guys ready? Week two. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a little bit more challenging than week one because we're building up the competition. All right, here we go. Get your chats ready. Question number one. Which actor played Noah in The Notebook? Guys, I know you're like, are you kidding me? I don't watch The Notebook. I have no idea. Sorry, there'll be another question for you, but which actor played Noah in The Notebook? Was it A, Chris Evans, B, Ryan Gosling, or C, Ryan Reynolds? Who was it? Answer your questions, go to the chat right now, text your friends right now if they're not on, tell them to get on so you can earn more points. Which was it, A, Chris Evans, B, Ryan Gosling, or C, Ryan Reynolds? One more second, who played Noah in The Notebook? Awesome, okay, I'm gonna give you the answers at the end so no one cheats. Guys, I know you cheated there, you waited for all the girls to answer and stole their answers, but it's okay. Here we go, question number two. Which movie was number one in the box office in 2017. So you gotta think back a little bit. Don't cheat and go to Google. Stay on the chat feature. I can see how many of you are viewing because the, the views go down. Stay on. Here we go. Was it A, Beauty and the Beast, the live version, B, Avengers Infinity Wars, or C, Star Wars, The Last Jedi? Which one was it? Take a guess if you don't know. If you know, good job. Put your answer, make, make sure you're putting your team next to it. Give you a couple more seconds. Which movie was number one in the box office in 2017? Awesome, got it in? Cool. Question number three. Who said this famous line from the Avengers Endgame? 
You gotta put your thinking out. Now, I'm not the best actor. If I was, I'd be in Hollywood making some awesome movies. So I'm gonna try to say this line the best that I can. But here it is. Who said this line from Avengers Endgames? I am totally from the future. Was it A, Thor, B, Iron Man, or C, Ant-Man? Who said it? I am totally from the future. Put your answers in, couple seconds. Even if you don't know, guess. Get your team some points. Leaders, I hope you're playing along with this because you're allowed to play. All right, here we go. Last question, question number four. My favorite actor. Which one of these movies is Kevin Hart not in? Not in, that he's not in. See how well you know Kevin Hart. Is it A, The Secret Life of Pets? B, Here Comes the Boom? Or C, Ride Along? Which one is Kevin Hart not in? Put your answers in because we're going to be sharing the answers and answers are going to be closed here in a couple seconds. So make sure you get your answers in. Got it? Which one was Kevin Hart not in? All right. Awesome job, guys. I'm going to go through the answers here real quick. Hopefully you got them right. But let's start with question number one. Who played Noah in the notebook? If you said B, Ryan Gosling, you are correct. Great job, girls. You probably got all of those right. Guys, you probably cheated, waited for the girls to answer, but that's okay. I thought it was Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is just like the pretty boy of TV today, so I would have guessed him, but great job if you guessed Ryan Reynolds. Second one is, what movie was number one in the box office in 2017? If you put C, Star Wars, The Last Jedi, you are correct. Congratulations, 2018 was Infinity Wars, and actually a surprising one, Beauty and the Beast Live, in real person was number two. I was kind of shocked by that, but it was good. Hannah loves it, she's a Disney person. So anyways, number three, who said this famous line from Avengers Endgames? I tried my best, I am totally from the future. If you said A, Thor, round of applause, great job. Thor was the one that said it, I had no idea. Hannah pulled it off of Google, but congratulations to you that probably guessed correctly. But anyways, one more, last one. My favorite actor, I knew this, I came up with this question. Which one of these movies was Kevin Hart not in? If you said, here comes the boom, you were correct. Kevin James played in that one. Yes, I was even surprised that Kevin Hart played in Secret Life of, Pl Life of Pets, but he did. So congratulations, hopefully you got them all right. Hopefully you earned some more points for your team. I just wanna remind you throughout the week on our social media, we'll have some more competition where you can earn mini game points for your team. So look out for that. But I can't wait to announce the new standings next Wednesday. Make sure you're on here live. Can't wait to see you then. Great job. And hey, I'll see you in a couple of seconds because we're about to head into the message. So check out this quick video that our incredible Pastor Jacob made. Well, hey, I'm back. Hope you guys enjoyed week two of our competition. Man, I'm excited to dive deep into the message with y'all tonight. Hopefully, guys, you earned some more points. You climbed up the, the ladder there, maybe even into first or second gir girls. Maybe you stayed there at the same. Oh, can't wait to find out next week. But hey, I'm excited to dive deep. You know, we're going over this series this month called Mayhem. And what we're really doing is just diving into some hot topics that maybe we're, we're seeing online or we're seeing on our social media or in the news outlets that have really caused us to really think from a different perspective. And you know, the one that we're going to be talking about today is something that COVID-19 has maybe brought up that, man, when we've heard this, that it's really caused us to think, what does this really mean? And it's this idea that, man, nothing will be the same. You know, I know I've been watching news, I've been watching social media, and people are saying, man, what COVID-19 has done, man, nothing is going to be the same once we can get back to normal. And I don't know about you, but even someone like me, that, that kind of freaks me out a little bit. It's like, 
what do you mean? Even when we go back to normal, you're still saying things like nothing is ever going to be the same. And what does that mean? How is it going to affect me? And, you know, I think one of the things that we get caught up in is, is that, man, like, how is this going to affect me as an individual? You know, I've heard things like, man, shopping's never going to be the same. Man, you know, my relationships are never going to be the same. Because all of this stuff is never going to be the same. How is this going to affect my personality? How is this, how am I going to have to adapt to this? And see, the reality is sometimes we get in this freak out moment and we're so worried about what the world is doing that sometimes we forget about what Jesus is doing. And I think this is a great hot topic to talk about because the reality is, is we look at what COVID-19 is doing. Some of them are saying it's going to last for another year, two years. It's going to change how we do things. And we sit here with these questions of like, how does this impact us? But I want to share some encouragement with you today, just right off the bat from Hebrews 13, 8. And it says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to read that one more time because I want you to hold on to that encouragement through this message and tomorrow and a week from now and a month now and forever because that's what this passage says is that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and and forever. And see, the reality is, is, even if the world around us is shifting, even if the world around us is changing, even if things are, are, are not going to be the same that they were maybe even just three months ago, the reality is, is if you call Jesus your Savior, if you know Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow and forever. And that is the God, that is Jesus that you get to walk with through this change and see, but even knowing that maybe you're still battling with the thoughts of, okay, Pastor Anthony, that's great. Like I know Jesus is there. I have a relationship with him, or maybe you're even here tonight and you're considering having a relationship with him and you're sitting there and you're like, I know what Jesus has to offer, but I still have to face these things day in and day out. And, and you're right, students, that that's a reality. That's something that I struggle with that I face. Man, what if like going out into public is just a little bit different? I know just watching online, like companies and stores are improving their online stores and processes to shop online because they're sitting there thinking they're not going to get the same traffic in their store that they're going to get online anymore. And all these different things, and maybe it's more personal, maybe it's relationally. What does this look like going to school next year? What does this look like being in big gatherings? How does this affect me relationally, my personality, or even practically. And, and you're right, it, it, it might be a challenge, it might be different, but the reality is, is the way that God is still gonna work in you, the way that God is still gonna work through you, it might change a little bit, but he's still gonna do the same things. He still wants to accomplish the same thing. As, and that is that he, his desire, his passion is that everyone would come into a relationship with him. Everybody would recognize that he died on the cross for them. And, and, and I can understand it because I'll wake up and I'll battle. I, I've said this to Hannah. I've even said this to some of our other pastors on staff and staff on, on our staff here at C3 is that, man, I'm a people person. Man, it, it's driving me crazy that I wake up and it's like, man, I can't do my normal things. I can't go play basketball with you some, with some of you students. I can't go out to lunch. I can't come to the church on a Wednesday night and see all 75 to 100 of you sitting in the auditorium and just being relational with you. Man, I even said to one of our staff members not too long ago, it was Mother's Day was so weird because it's like... I, couldn't even leave the house, couldn't even really go do stuff because of everything that was going on. And no, I, I did it. I got Hannah a nice Longhorns steak, Mother's Day lunch. It was awesome. So I still tried my best, but there was still things that I struggle with. And, and so I can sit here and say, man, I, I get it. I understand it. But the reality is, is we can look at Micah 3, 6, and this is just an encouraging verse. And it says this, I am the Lord. And I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not consumed. See, the reality is, is Jesus, God even recognized that as human history goes on, as human history progresses, things, this world, humanity, it's going to change. Things are going to happen that are going to change within our environments 
We're gonna respond to different things. Things like pandemics are gonna happen. You see all the time of these massive weather events, earthquakes that change cities and countries. Things change, but see, God shares a promise with us that he does not change, nor when these changes take place, when, when our world is evolving, if we press into him, we will not be consumed. We will, we will be able to navigate. We will be able to adjust. And so when you're sitting at home listening to this message right now, live on Wednesday night, and you're, you're, caught, you're, you're covered in fear and anxiety because you don't know how you're going to adapt to these changes, how you're going to adapt to these little things of how life may be different, hold on to the promise. Hold on to the future that, hey, the God that I serve, he's not going to change. Not only is he not going to change, but he's not going to let me be consumed. Man, if I press into him, if I continue to navigate with Jesus in the forefront of my life, even if this world changes, even if people change, even if, if, if the way that I, I would do things change, I will be able to adjust. I will be able to navigate. And this leads me to my point for the, for the night students is this, is we can face change because our God is constant. I don't know about you, but... Sometimes I love change. I'll see change and I'm like, man, I can't wait to, to move this around. I can't wait to try this new thing. And man, I'm pumped. I'm excited. And man, change just gets me going. It's like my fuel. But then at the same time, there's some change that scares the crap out of me. There's some change that is like, I do not want to do this. And I'll be vulnerable with you here for a moment. Man, when, when I moved to Columbus for the first time, I had never left Cleveland. I've never left my family. And, and even though God was calling me to do this in my season of life, to, to move my wife, to move a, a six-month-old baby boy that we just had from a place that we were comfortable with, a place that we, were, we, were, we knew everything, we knew what to expect, we had family, everything was easy. Change was in our midst and we were going to a city, yeah, that was only two hours away, but man, no friends, new community, new job to a degree where I had to learn a whole new student ministry, students and leaders. And man, I gotta be honest with you in the beginning, when, when rubber hit the road and it was ready to pack that U-Haul, man, that change, it, it was scary. Yes, obviously I'm standing before you here on this video and I didn't allow that change to derail me. I didn't allow that, that change to have me throw in the, the towel and, and not do what God was calling me to do. But I recognize and I understand that change can bring two types of feelings. It can bring a, an excitement because that, that new thing, that, that change that is coming, it might be exciting to you. But then there's some of us, if not all of us in some way, face that change that is like, whoa, like, that's not okay. I'm not comfortable with that. For example, what COVID's brought what COVID-19 has brought, brought in, and some of that change has not been pleasant, has not been enjoyable, has ultimately really stunk. And it's just not been good. But the reality is, is Micah 3.6 says this so clearly that in the midst of those, in the midst of those great changes that, that you're excited for, that you're ready to take on, God's gonna be there. But in those changes that, that might bring fear, that might be anxiety, that bring anxiety, those things that you're not looking forward to and you're trying every, every ounce of you is trying to keep it the same because you don't want that change to take place, God's there letting you know, hey, allow me to lead you through this because I will not let you be consumed. I got you. You're my son, you're my daughter, and we're gonna do this together. And, and if you allow this change to take place, I can promise you this, even though you might not see it in the moment, if you're following the path that God has, man, he does some crazy things through those changes. God's done some th crazy things in my life. Just, I've been here at C3 for just over a year, and man, he's opened my eyes and doors to things that I never even thought were possible a year ago. I've been able to work on my identity, on my, my own health, and man, I'm in a place that I never thought Anthony, your student pastor, could be a year later. But it was because I was willing to embrace that change that wasn't, that didn't seem all glitz and glamoury at first and allow God to do what he wanted to do through that change. And so I challenge you tonight, students, in this change that COVID-19 has brought, maybe it's, it's been really bad on you. Maybe you've had tough navigating through, but I encourage you to press into God and be like, all right, God, this change that I'm going through, 
How are you able to use this? How are you going to use this through me? And man, when you're able to ask God through that lens, he starts to open these doors. He starts to bring clarity in a way that helps you take that change that at once you were like, "Uh uh-uh, nope, nope, Uh, I'm staying here to be like, all right, I can embrace this change. I can take this change and use it for the good. And I just want to share this last passage from Psalms 102. And I thought it was just a good way to kind of understand this idea of change and this topic or this hot topic we're talking about tonight of that, man, nothing's going to go back to the same, which some of that might be true and some of it might not be true. But Psalms 102, 24 through 27, it says this. So I said, do not take me away, my God, in the midst of my days, Your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like garments, like clothing. You will change them and they will disagree. But you remain the same and your years will never end. See, see, that's just an encouragement. That scripture that, that David wrote in Psalms 102 says, man, the earth, what we, we know as this planet, as America, as, as a country, as humanity, it will change. It will wither. It will perish. It will be ever evolving. But over all of humanity, over the ends of time, our God will stay the same. I don't know about you, but man, when I hear things like that now about what COVID-19 have, has caused, what change it's brought, maybe good, maybe bad, I sit back and I say, man, through all of this, we have a God that's gonna stay the same. And I'm gonna close with this, students. Man, when you can look through it from that perspective, from that lens, it allows you to see things from a different perspective, from a different lens. Last week, we talked about this idea of putting what we've learned into action and taking steps, but the reality is in order to take those steps, sometimes change has to take place. Sometimes we have to change our perspective or change our setting or change our placement or the way that we think about something. And when we do that, we start to see these things in the way that God wants to see them in this season. See, God's not looking down, and I don't believe our God is just looking down being like, oh, coronavirus, too bad. Like, it happens. No, the God that we serve is, is feeling our pain, is, is, is wanting to navigate through this with us, wants to partner with us. You just heard this past weekend, man, we had this goal of $25,000 as a church. Man, that's a lot of money. I don't know about you, but if someone wrote me a check for $25,000, I'll be like, heck yes, let's go. But what happened? Man, we came together, we changed our perspective. We saw that, hey, this season just doesn't need to be about us. And man, our church together as a body, we raised over $65,000, not for our glory, not for anything else, but that Jesus is glory in this season to give to Food Bank so that we could help in this time of need. And we just didn't reach our goal. We went above and beyond because we were able to change our perspective. I believe that. And I believe that today, tonight, students, if you're able to, to look at this, this hot topic that we're going through, man, how is this the, the end of this? Now that we're starting to come out of it, restaurants and salons and, and shops are opening back up. We're starting to come out of this. As, as we come out of this and as things are, have changed, how are we going to respond to that? Are we going to allow the change to cripple us, to hold us down, to to bring fear and anxiety into our lives? Are we going to be like, all right, God, you're the same. That God before the coronavirus, that God before all this took place is the same God today. And you're not going to let me be consumed by this and you're just going to help me to press forward. You're going to help me to grab this change and say, man, yeah, I can face this change because my God, my Jesus, he's constant. He's there yesterday, he's there today, and he's there forever. See, students, I love you, and I know these times have been hard. I know you've battled things that you've never battled before in your life. But I want to encourage you to to grab that change, to, to believe that that Jesus is for you, and to allow that change to partner with Jesus to see what he can do. 
I love you. I can't wait for week three of our competition next week, but also our next hot topic. It's gonna be incredible. I also want to just plant this seed in your brain. The last week of this month, we're gonna be doing a Q&A with you, and, and we're just gonna talk about what's on your mind. And so we're gonna give you an opportunity over the next couple of weeks on our social media to send in some questions, some hot topics that you're thinking about right now. We do our best here to, 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 sh to talk about those topics, but man, it's even better when we can hear from you. So look out for those story posts where you can send in your hot topics so we can talk about that the last week of May. Love you guys, have a great rest of your night. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's message. And what a great reminder that even when things are chaotic and constantly changing, God is always the same. And there is still so much unknown in our current reality, but God really is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we wanna challenge you this week to not go through this alone, but instead to jump on the Zoom call after service with your small group, because we're all in this together. I just wanna take a minute now and pray for you guys this week. God, we thank you so much that, for that reminder that you really are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, we thank you that even in the midst of so much unknown and uncertainty, God, that we can turn to you and look to you for all the answers. So God, we pray this week for every single one of us, Lord, that you would help us to seek you in all that we do and keep pursuing all that you have for us. And God, we just thank you for who you are and all that you're doing. We pray all these things in your son's name. Well, guys, that's it for tonight. We can't wait to see you all next week. Still ain't got it bumping. Hey.